and a trace me new life did he give me to my heart does my savior now live his love and a trace hi hi there how hi. you doing good how are you good <laughs> Well, welcome audience. We're so glad that you're visiting the channel of Kona Face Center. And I've got an exciting interview coming up in just a minute. And this is my friend Sandra, but I call her Sandy and most of the time I just end up with sand. But we've known each other for many, many years. Yes. And so it's kind of fun doing this together. But I would like you to give us the thumbs up and I would like you to subscribe if you have not done that yet. And we have many things on our channel, so be sure to visit us often. Are you ready? Yes, I'm okay. ready. Okay, well, I'm gonna ask you three questions, okay. and the first one, main one, I'm gonna ask you is, tell the audience about yourself. Well, my name is Sandy, my last name is Shepherd. Isn't that a great last name? And I was born in Augsburg, Germany, and I moved then from, to North Carolina. My dad was in the Army, and then we moved to California, and I, Spent my elementary and junior high years there. I spent a couple years in Alaska after that with junior high and high school, then back to Hawaii, kind of toggled back, I mean, back to California, I toggled back and forth. And then after graduation from high school, I moved to Hawaii because I was in Alaska at that time, and Alaska, Hawaii, I mean, it was an easy decision to make. So then I came over to Hilo to go to college, and my plan was to take my prerequisites for nursing school. But I came to the Kona site and met this handsome Hawaiian man and got distracted for, happily distracted for a few years and had some children. And then uh, we moved back to Hilo and I started nursing school in 1983. And I, that's where I met Pastor Terry. And we proceeded to go to nursing school together. And then in 1986, after graduation, I went to Michigan, although I was never raised there, that was my, where my family was from. And my grandmother was there and I took care of her. She was in the last stages of life and so I took care of her and stayed there and our children went to high school there and then in, 19, in, excuse me, in 2000, moved back to Hawaii and here I am still. And I'm glad she did. I even visited her or actually she came to, well, yeah, I went to yeah. your house one time and she came to visit me because I would visit my mom in Chicago when she was still here with us. Yeah. So even though we were apart for 10 years, we kept in touch. And I was just so happy when she moved back and that she moved to Kona because before she lived on the other side of the island. Yeah. So this way I got to see her all the time. That's right. All yes. The time. All the time. <laughs> so how many children did you have and how many grandchildren and great grandchildren do you have? Okay, I have three children. I have two who live here on planet Earth. My two sons, Jacob and Isaac, and then I have a daughter, Christy, who has moved on and lives in heaven. Um, she died in a, as a result of a car accident when she was 18 in 1995. My two sons have three, boy, I think I have seven grandchildren. They both um, were married to single moms. And so I got instant grandchildren, nothing better than instant grandchildren. And then I got some other grandchildren once they had um, them and their wives had babies together. My oldest grandchildren, I have two that are 21, and my youngest just turned five months old. So there's quite a age span between the, with the grandkids. Yeah, that's it. That's and how many of those kids are great grandkids? I have two great grandkids, Kaysen and Lexi, and I have one, two, three, four, I think six, seven grandchildren, boys and girls. So, yes, she's young, and yes. our kids there just you. started when they were we young were, too. <laughs> yeah, they were very young. You know, we were like three. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to ask you the second question, the okay. second main question. And I would just like to know a testimony of yours. Well, well I think the um, testimony, my life is a testimony of God's grace and mercy towards me. When I was, um, when Christy died, both my husband and I were not walking with the Lord at that time, and it was a, quite a trauma, as you can imagine, um, devastation. And that drew me closer back to the Lord, but I still had not made that final connection. I was still kind of back and forth, back and forth through the grieving process. And then when we came back to Hawaii um, in 2000, 
It was because I knew that we just needed to come home. Gordon was from Hawaii, he had been away from home, and I was like, let's go home, it's time to go home. So we did, home being Hawaii, and um, started coming to this church in 2003. I had been keeping in contact with Pastor Terry, but still had not made that final decision to get all in, to step all in with Jesus. And so in 2003, we started coming to church here, and Gordon was a believer, born again, saved, speaking in tongues. I remember him, um, one day he came home from men's camp, and he, I said, how'd that go? In fact, I signed him up, he hadn't even signed up, and he just ended up having to go, and he said, well, because I could speak in tongues now, and I said, well, well, how did that happen? He goes, I went up front and said, if you're in there, you better come out and talk now. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sounds like Gordon. So he did, and that was just it was such a sweet moment of just his faith and belief and just his character. And um, But in 2004, Gordon was killed in an accident also, and it was a work-related accident. And so that was quite um, another devastating blow to me and my sons, and a very difficult time where, you know, you kind of wonder if you still are going to stay swimming or if you're just going to sink. But through the help of being here at this church, through Pastor Terry, who called me daily, every day for a year, she called me and she just listened. And sometimes it was just a matter of listening to my tears. And other times it was just a word of encouragement. Um, I kept coming to church even though I didn't really want to be here. I just wanted to stay home um, due to the grief and the sadness. and. But I kept telling myself, just keep coming, just keep coming. If you keep coming, things are going to get better. And they did. And it wasn't overnight. It took a while, but slowly the heaviness of the grief lifted. And um, God has healed me. He's also restored my sons, my relationships with them. Um, because of the grief and because of the impact it had on both of my sons, having lost their sister, then lost their dad, they really, we all kind of was like, all were different lifeboats floating out there. And um, eventually, through prayer and through God's mercy and grace, he brought us all back into the same ship. So that's been the restorations. That's quite a testimony. The opportunity to walk through the grief, the healing process, to the place where God is now made able for me to lead a class, Psalms 23, here at Kona Faith Center, um, to help people walk through the grief process so they don't get swallowed up by it, so they can see that what's normal, even though it feels very abnormal, many things are normal in the grief process. And I think that they're learning that everybody grieves differently. Yes, yes. It's not just male, female, or child, parent, but it's just people who grieve, they grieve very differently, and God will walk you through whatever that needs to be. Yeah, and with the grief process, I mean, Pastor Terry's relationship with Gordon was one, so she grieved her loss of that friendship. I grieved the loss of a husband, my companion. The boys grieved the loss of a father. This Gordon's sisters grieved the loss of a sibling, and then it depends on how close the siblings were. So there's so many factors in the grief process, and that's why it's never the same for anybody, and that's why, you know, in a year you'll be better. No, likely not, but you'll be, you'll be better in the fact that you won't be as in deep grief if you allow the Lord to work in you, if you allow the Lord to, to give him that grief and to heal you. He knew what it was to be separated, yeah, he father did. and son, didn't he, yes, when Jesus he did. went to the cross? He did. Yeah. You know, sometimes people say, well, you know, but in three days, you know, him and Jesus were together again. Well, you know, I always say I'm just a day closer to seeing Gordon and Christy again. Amen. You know, and it'll be just like that, just like opening that soda can, that fizz comes up, that's how quick it's going to be in the, in, in the light of eternity. And Gordon and Christy are going to have a lot to tell you. Yes, yes, yeah, I know. I, I remember one time Pastor Terry came up to me and she said, she was, I wonder um, if on the day that Gordon went home, if the Lord came up to Christy and said, your dad's coming home today. And uh, I thought, wow, that really blessed me. I was really blessed. And I'm always blessed to think about Christy and Gordon together. Yeah, it was a great loss for him when Christy oh, man. went home too. Yeah. Yes. Okay, I have my third big and final question. Uh -huh. You gave a little bit of an answer to this okay. in your testimony, but you said what brought you to Kona Faith Center. Right. 
So why have you stuck it out all these years? Because you wouldn't let me leave. <laughs> <laughs> True. <laughs> she knows where I live. <laughs> um, I stuck it out because, as I said, you know, we came back in 2000. And I came to start coming back to this church in 2003, and then Gordon died in 2004, a year later, and it was the first couple years I stuck it out because I just knew I had to be here if I was going to be able to live and to survive. And then after that, I just, it's like the Lord just does this really slowly. You don't even see it. The next thing you know, you're interacting and the joy is returning and you're laughing. So it was a matter, I, this was my family now. This is where I belonged. This is where the people who had walked through me in the darkest time of my life, who had been loving to me and, and supported me, even when I was not easy to love or to support because of the anger or just the sadness. And, um, but they stood beside me and you know, you just can't, you can't replace that. And that's God, and plus God changed me and he made this my home. And, and he slowly has brought, um, bringing my family in. So my sons aren't here yet, but they will be. And my grandchildren have been here off and on. When I've had the opportunity, I bring them. And um, so God is doing a good work here. And that's why I've stayed. And then I felt so, um, I love this church, the people and the vision of this church so much that I really wanted to become closer to that. And, and at a, there came a season where I knew it was time to end my career as nursing as far as case management. So I said, can I come work here? And so I've been working here and it's been just great because I've been able to um, just love seeing the people come in. I love seeing God change them. I love them seeing them sitting right by that door because they want to get out of here as quick as possible as soon as <laughs> service is over to be right in the front and engaged and then in ministry. It's just like, it's so awesome. That's why I'm still here because the people of Kona Faith Center and you and Pastor Jason. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Yeah. yeah. They, have, they have a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about being a superintendent and what that looks uh, like and what that yes. means here? Oh, well, uh, I did have opportunity after I'd um, been attending for about four or five years. I went to the ministry training school that Pastor Jason offered, and it was a three-year program, meeting once a week um, for three to four hours of class, and then we had homework during the week. And after three years, we were, um, excuse me, I just kind of slipped tears. Um, we graduated, and following that, I became the superintendent of the Ministry of Helps. The Ministry of Helps department um, is huge. It starts from the time that you pull up into the parking lot. We have the parking lot um, team. The front door, we have the greeters, the people that bring you all the way in if you're new. We also have um, our counters, our ushers, our ministry um, cleaning, excuse me, our kitchen ministry, our guest services ministry, our maintenance team. Thank you, John and Larry. Um, we, we just, I'm trying to think of all the different, anything that's, oh, our, count, our oil and cloth team. There's 10 teams all together. If I forgot someone, please forgive me. Um, and so we all work together behind the scenes, doing those things that make it so that when people come into the church, they can f experience the presence of God. They can um, feel, experience the love of God, and then they can connect to God's principles because they're, they're in a safe environment. And that's what the Ministry of Helps team does. It makes it so that people come in. You don't have to worry about it. You go up to be ministered to. There's going to be somebody there to help you with Kleenex if you... Um, need an usher there to help escort you back. There's somebody. So the Ministry of um, Helps teams, it's just that. It helps. We help the other teams. We help uh, um, the worship team and our pastors so they can do their part and they don't have to worry about all the details. We take care of those. Yes, without the teams oh, and man. all of you guys, you. Jason and I would be a mess. <laughs> <laughs> they keep us from being a mess, I can yes, tell you that. Yes, they do. Well, Sandy, it has been just so enjoyable having <laughs> you sit right next to me and doing this with you. Yeah, and thank it. you for coming in You're on welcome. a Saturday. I appreciate You're it. You're welcome. It's and my pleasure. 
God bless you all, and be sure and visit our channel, and we have lots of things there. Our website is great. We have daily Bible reading, and if you live in the Kona area, we want to encourage you to stop by and visit us, and we may let you sit in the back row initially, <laughs> but eventually we're going to move you up. That's right. So God bless you all. Mahalo. Bye. You alone, Lord, made me a brand new creation. Only by your spirit could this have been done.